When it comes to meaningful discipleship, that word discipleship, um, if you asked five different people in the church what it means to be a disciple or discipleship, you'd probably get a bunch of different answers. Yeah. It's it's, uh, it's one of those words that in, in church has become to mean a lot of different things depending on who you are. And so when we talk about meaningful discipleship, let's start with actually the secular definition of a disciple. Mm -hmm. And that is somebody who accepts and assists in spreading the doctrines of another. And so as believers, we have accepted the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, when we talk about discipleship, both in our lives and in the lives of others that we get to pour into, it's how do we, how do we go about that spreading of yeah. those doctrines? And so yeah. we want to talk about what meaningful discipleship looks like um, first in our church. And so yeah. when you, if you've ever been at Cross City before and you've been attending worship and you've just asked yourself the question, how do I go deeper? What's my next step? We want to talk about the five levels of discipleship here at Cross City Church. And the first one is that. It's worship. The sitting under the weekly sitting under God's teaching from our pastor um, or whoever's uh, giving the sermon that week, sitting under that teaching of God's word, that act of worship is the first level of discipleship here at the church. Right under that would be connection. Our connection group model that we have here at the church is the next step of going deeper in discipleship here. That's where you get a smaller group of community around you that's there uh, for fellowship, to worship together in further teaching of God's word, to serve together, all of those kind of things. And so past that, level three here at the church would be equip. And so equip is a ministry here. Uh, primarily, it's, it, it looks like classes that are help, that are here to supplement um, specific areas of your walk with the Lord, whether that be through your finances, with your marriage, um, how to study and even teach God's word. All of that stuff happens primarily on Wednesday nights, but also throughout different days of the week. Right. And so the equip ministry is that third level of discipleship here at the church. Mm -hmm. Past that, we have our mentoring program. And here at Cross City Church, we have mentoring both one-on-one -on -one yeah. and then also mentors to couples. And so both of those, whether it's you as an individual wanting to meet with somebody, walk through a process that we have with an, an individual to help just grow you in your walk with the Lord, um, or as a couple for the, for the married couples out there, if you'd rather walk with, with another couple to help guide you and walk you through your marriage and help grow you uh, and your spouse in the ways of the Lord, that's, that's the fourth level of discipleship here. And then the fifth level, which is really, it starts to narrow down even further and further, is our SALT ministry here. And so those happen about every two years they start up, but it is a two-year intensive program that you apply for um, and are interviewed and approved for, but you spend two years just diving into the depths, all that God's Word has to offer um, to learn how to teach God's Word, to study God's Word, to how to discern truth uh, in the messages that you hear, uh, but that happens every two years, and you can find information about that at CrossCity.Church. And so those are the five levels of discipleship that we have specifically here at Cross City Church. Yeah, and the one thing we want to really focus on today is the mentoring part of that. Uh, the discipleship one-on-one -on -one, mentoring to couples as well and and when we look at that we got to look at there's a there's a commitment so if you're you're wanting to come alongside someone to walk in their faith to help them in their spiritual journey there's going to be a commitment it's not just hey, I want to check the box and do this there's got to be some investment into that so we're going to kind of walk through what those five investments look at and it's going to be an acronym of the word Bible uh, and so as we look at that here's the things that you want to think about is I've, if I'm interested in, in, in mentoring, if I want to pour into someone to disciple them, to, to bring their, them along in their spiritual journey, these are the five investments that I'm going to need to make. The first one is the letter B, which is build up. To build up means you want to make sure that when you're speaking with that individual or that couple, that you're speaking truth and love. So many times in today's society, we all have an opinion and we all want our opinion to be known. But when you're dealing with an individual or a couple that may be going through a crisis, uh, you want to be able to speak truth from Scripture in love. And in order to do that, you've got to be praying for the Holy Spirit to guide your words uh, during this time. I always use the example, it's like if you've ever been hit in the face with just a bunch of cold water, uh, it's not a great feeling. In fact, you really, once that happens, you kind of get to that point where you're ready to fight. And, and so when you share something that's not in love, that you share it in a threatening manner, it's the defense mechanism of that individual or couple is going to come up. So you want to pray that the Holy Spirit would lead you to be able to come alongside one of the build them up to be able to share the truth in love in a non threatening way. So we want to build up. Uh, that's the first investment we want to do. And the I would be instruct or admonish would be another word. We want to, when we're investing in the lives of others, we want to take God's word. We want to let it dwell within us richly, like Colossians says, and we want to use that to instruct. As Russell said, building up others and doing it with the right heart. But we do want to take the truths of God's word and we want to let those instruct 
those that we're trying to pour into. We want to admonish them and build them up in that way. Exactly. And then when you come to the, the second B, that's bearing other people's burdens. We, we want to be able to come alongside someone. If they, if they have a weight on them or something's going on that's literally crushing them, we don't want to leave them alone. We want to be able to bear, come alongside. So when you think about an investment, you're thinking about how can I come along to kind of lighten that person's low? What, what scripture can I share with them? How can I just physically come alongside them? How can I pray for them, investing in them to carry help, carry that load. We're not asking you to take the load off of them. You are not Jesus Christ. But what you are is you're coming alongside that person and say, we're here for you. We want to help you to carry that load or that heavy burden. Yeah. The L would be love. And so mm -hmm. that is a word that really is at just the center of why we do what we do. It's at the center of our faith. It is what God comes and he gives us in the person of Jesus. He shows us unconditional love. And so when we invest in the lives of others, that has to be at the center <clears throat> of what we do. Um, but that has to be a sincere love. You know, yeah. that you truly actually care about somebody. And so that's something you've got to wrestle with yourself. If, if investing in somebody, if you are called on to mentor and, and it becomes a, a task, then there, there's something that we would love to talk about and meet with you about to talk about the heart there because it needs to be sincere. Um, you know, I just think about people in your life uh, or in my life and you probably have in yours as well that you're, you may not be family. Um, but yeah. just that you have such a personal relationship, such a close relationship. You love that person so much that it's like they're your brother. It's like they're your sister, um, your family you know, exactly. itself. And so we want to make sure that when we're investing in others, that it's, that it's rooted in love. So, and then the last letter E is to exhort, to come alongside someone, to in encourage them. There's so many times when, when, when people have done in my life, when there's been those times where I'm, 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 I'm not feeling great, you know, there's struggles in my life to have someone just to come along and encourage me. And so we want you to be that person to come along, to invest, to encourage, to say, don't give up keep going, keep taking that that next step. You never know what that one word of encouragement could do for that person because you may not know exactly what that person is going through that day. So just to be able to encourage them. And, and in order to really do that, you've got to take your eyes off of yourself and look to Jesus, for Jesus' guidance to be able to give you that, that understanding that you want to encourage someone. And so we want to build up, we want to instruct, we want to bear their burdens, we want to love, and we want to encourage or exhort. Those are the five investments as we look at mentoring or discipling someone. And so moving from those levels of discipleship at our church to the investments that you make, we want to also now talk about five rhythms of your life yeah. um, that it, it's kind of twofold. As you look, we as believers in Christ, we are disciples ourselves, and we need to look at the rhythms of our life, You know how our life on a day-to-day -day basis looks. But then also we need to look as we pour into others into speaking those and teaching those godly mm -hmm. rhythms uh, of our lives. And so we want to talk about five of those. The first would be this, rhythm number one, fellowship with God. Yeah. All of this, uh, our, our faith, our salvation, mm -hmm. all hinges on the fellowship that we have with our Lord and Savior. And so that is the most important thing. And so some practical ways to really, uh, as you look search that out in your own heart, but some questions that you can actually use when you're meeting with a person that you're mentoring with, or even just a group, a small group setting. These questions really help kind of get you to assess what what that rhythm looks yeah. like. And they would be this, what, what has God been teaching you in your daily time with him? Yeah. Just to be able to ask that question that makes you think on Man, what does that what does that look like for me this week? What has that rhythm? Have have I been in God's word? Have I been in prayer? Have I been worshiping Him? Um, another question would be just: Are there questions that you have uh, about what you've been reading or about something that you've heard? I think oftentimes we're we're always asking, you know, what has God been teaching you? What has God been teaching you? A lot of times we just have questions. Yeah. But those questions are rooted and the answers are rooted in our fellowship with God and they would drive that rhythm. And so the first one is fellowship with God. Yeah, and the second rhythm then would be off of that would be to fight for holiness. And what does that look like? That looks like when you're meeting with someone, you want to be able to ask the question, hey, how have you experienced victory uh, this week? What, it, what has God done in your life or shown you uh, this week or in the last two weeks where he just stepped in and intervened and, and you prayed for something, he answered that prayer, whatever, just to celebrate that victory with them. And then the other part about it is, is how have you been defeated? You know, what are, what are things that are going on that you just feel beaten up that maybe Satan is getting a hold of you and that, and that you want to be able to express that? And the thing is about this, this is where it gets real. Because if you're the only one asking the question, all you're doing is how do you've had victory, how you've had defeat, and you never share your own experience of victory and defeat, 
You're never going to have the realness. You're never going to be authentic with the person. You're not going to have the sincere love as Isaiah was talking about. Other, There's not going to be that trust. So if you're talking with someone and they're always giving you the answer, everything's great, everything's okay, nothing's mm-hmm. wrong, you know something's wrong because every single one of us, we struggle at times. And so we want this part to go, hey, how have you, have you had victory? How have you had defeat? How can I pray for you? Those things when you're talking about fighting for that holiness and that real that real time together. Yeah. The third rhythm would be this idea of impacting the family. Yeah. Just what is what is your impact in your family look like on a day to day basis? And so here are some of those questions that can kind of tease that out. Um, if you are talking to a, a person that's married, how have you invested in your spouse spiritually this yeah. week? That's a question both for the husband and the wife. Yeah. How have you invested? in your spouse. Um, If it's a single parent or a married couple that have children, how have you poured into, how have you invested into your child this week or your children this week? Those are the questions that start to develop or really have you asking, what what does my rhythm look like impacting my family? Um, for, For the younger ones, maybe you're a student, a question you need to ask yourself, how have you submitted to your parents? And I know that can be a touchy topic and there's things that, you know, obviously there's exceptions and stuff like that, but how have you submitted to the authority is probably maybe even a better word that you have in your household. Um, And then all of us, regardless of where, how old or young, whatever our life stage marital status is, how have you served your family? Yeah, We all have parents. A lot of us have siblings, many of us have children, whatever it is, how have you served your family? Just asking the person you're pouring into or even asking yourself that question is going to have you thinking on what is the rhythm of investing my family look like in my life? Yeah, and so one thing off of that is is the key word there is how have you impacted them spiritually? So you just wanna make sure that they're not going, wow, wash the dishes or I mowed the lawn or whatever. It's like, how have you done it spiritually? The fourth rhythm there is impacting believers. Uh, How are you uh, impacting your church? How are you praying for your church? How Mm -hmm. are you praying for your pastor? How have you uh, invested in others uh, in your church? How are you invested in other believers in your neighborhood? So you always want to be on the lookout and and, and figuring out ways of taking that next step in your journey on not only just being discipled into, but then how can I disciple into someone else? How can I pour into other believers? So the impacting believers is the fourth rhythm. And then the last one, kind of just as an extension of that is what does the rhythm of your life look like regarding impacting the lost mm. impacting those that do not have a genuine faith in jesus christ as their lord and savior and so, so it may seem obvious but two quick questions you can ask yourself or others that you're pouring into is did you have an opportunity to share the gospel yeah. this week did you have a kingdom conversation did you talk about jesus with somebody that does not know him as their lord and savior um, another thing it, it's so important but you can ask who are you prayerfully asking god to open a door to have a conversation with. Yeah. Oftentimes we you know we we sometimes forget prayer or maybe that's just me. But a lot of the times you know if, if you're not having a lot of those conversations, are you even praying for the opportunity to have conversations with lost people? If there's somebody as you're thinking about that that you're thinking of specifically, pray by name for that person. Yeah. God, give me the opportunity to talk to Russell this week about Jesus, not just about sports or the weather and as good as those things yeah. are, that I can have a conversation with my friend about Jesus Christ. And asking those questions really start to, again, have you reflect on what the rhythm of your life or the person you're pouring into regarding impacting the lost. Yeah, and we've thrown a lot at you uh, tonight. And so one of the last things we want to close with is what does it look like practically mm-hmm. as, you're, as you're meeting with someone? And so one of the things I want to share with you is that when you begin meeting, uh, again, with an individual or a couple, do not assume that you're meeting with someone that is a believer. Right. And sometimes that's a tough conversation to get into. So one of the things I, I love doing is I love to hear stories. I love to hear testimonies. So the very first time I meet with somebody, I don't care if they've been a church member for 27 years or 27 days. My first question is, hey, I love to hear stories. I love to hear testimonies. Would you mind sharing with me how you came to know the Lord? And and, and in that, you get to know, first and foremost, that they have a relationship with Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. If they don't, it's a great opportunity going to Isaiah's point a minute ago about impacting the loss of being able to really have that conversation right there. The other part about it is understanding that this is a discipleship. This is a, yep. this is an ongoing process that that as you start investing, as you start pouring into someone's life, it's not about okay, getting through this and stopping. You're continuing on until that person or couple that you're investing in, they are investing in others. Right. It's about multiplying meaningful disciples. And so you want to make sure that they understand that you yourself understand right. that that as you get into that that's 
that's what you're doing. Um, other thing is, I don't know if you got anything, is that Isaiah that we talked about that I love having the, the, the Bible open. Right. I love having a Bible there. Uh, nothing against the phone like that. You can do all that sort of stuff. But to be able to go into Scripture, look it up into Scripture, point it out, uh, have a Bible, and then you, you never know. You may be sitting there at a restaurant mm-hmm. or eating breakfast or lunch or whatever, and the server comes by and asks a question, and there you go. you got a great opportunity to have a kingdom For conversation. Sure. And I think one of those... it. Just doing little things like that whenever you're meeting with somebody, having a something as simple as having a Bible open on the table, what it does is it just it makes it very clear what we're doing here. Yeah. It's not that we're not going to have conversations about the movies we went and saw. It's not that we're not going to have conversations about the new album that came out. But it is very clear, even if just out of, the, out of your peripheral, we are here because we have committed to this relationship, to pouring into each other's yeah. lives, discipling each other around God's word and that truth. And then, yeah, it, it does. It has those supplemental, you know, uh, effects where the waiter that comes by and it clearly sees that you guys are talking about Jesus. And yeah. and I've seen time and time again how that just opens up conversations. So if you're meeting together with somebody, have a Bible open. Yeah, absolutely. And then the last thing would be is 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 as you meet with someone, you want to have an off ramp. You want to mm-hmm. give them the opportunity. So so say six to eight weeks in, it's just become a real struggle for you, for the person to, to commit to meeting with you. And it seems like you're the one kind of doing all the pulling. You want to give them an opportunity to kind of take an off ramp at this time. So you want to make sure you set the bar high. We just right. talked about all the stuff. You want to make sure you set that bar high, but you want to give them that opportunity that, hey, this may not be the best time right now for me to be able to meet with you on a weekly or biweekly or monthly time. So let's pause this for a moment and you want them to understand hey that's great i love you i'm praying for you but i want to know that if this isn't the best time we're, we're going to be having an off-ramp where mm-hmm. there's no hard feelings whatsoever so you want to make sure you have that in place too. exactly because what it does is it just promotes clarity between mm-hmm. the relationship it, it's it's clear on what the expectations are so you can maintain that bar yeah. at a high standard hey we said it was going to look like this we said we were going to do this but having that off-ramp making sure that that is known what that looks mm-hmm. like um, that makes it to where you don't just have somebody that just stops showing up. And, and, and the biggest consequence of that, that is, the biggest risk of that is that who knows what fellowship that person is having or that couple is having outside of what y'all were doing. Yeah. And so, yes, we want to keep the standard of discipleship high when you enter into that agreement of mentorship with somebody, but you want to make it very clear, hey, if this doesn't work out, I love you, but here's how, here's yeah. how we step back from that, and it's okay. Yeah, absolutely, because it is. The whole thing about this is about a relationship. Mm -hmm. It's not about a program. It's not about checking the box. It's literally about having a relationship with that individual or that couple. Yeah. And so that's what meaningful discipleship looks like here at Cross Mm -hmm. City. If you have any questions about that, go to crosscity.church. You can find information on all the things that we talked about. We would love to encourage you all to look into our mentoring program, either one-on-one or mentors to couples.